Hello everyone, I'm Tim Russell. I'm here at my farm today. We're having a cookout. We're gonna do open pit barbecuing and hope that you can learn a few tips. This is the inside look of the way I've been taught to do it by my grandfather many years ago. When I first started cooking with my grandfather, we would cook at his house and do 800 pounds of shoulders and he would cook for his friends that were in his CB club. We'd have to cook and start at four in the afternoon and then we'd quit at eight o'clock in the morning. Everybody picked their meat up and we'd go home. <clears throat> it was very hard to stay up when I was young, two or three o'clock in the morning. It took several years to get used to that. Definitely you need to have enough wood for the project to do in case like today we have some winds are picking up so and it seems to chew up your wood a little faster in between the 45 minute time. And to use charcoal, it has to be at a burned down bone white heat range to be able to not have that flavor that you add to your meat, which just isn't a pleasing taste to me. I just like to use the wood and shovel it the old fashioned way. The type of pit construction I have here that works very well and you can move it around, you level off some ground, nice and smooth and level. Two concrete blocks high, then set your mezzanine grating on top of that and then one more concrete block to go around to make a border to put your top on. A portable unit, you can take it to another friend's house if somebody had to have a party that you really wanted to cook for. The key thing to look for is whether you can put your hand in between the fire and underneath the mezzanine grating. And if you can do that, hold it there for several seconds, that's about 300 degrees. Rushing it and trying to cook it too fast you're just you're just gonna hurt yourself and dry out your meat. Barbecue cooking it's all about slow smoked and the more you can smoke it the better the taste you're gonna have. Using good hardwood to sustain very even temperature you can use oak, you can use maple, hickory. You don't see much of a difference in the flavor because the flavor comes out of when the grease drips down onto the coals comes back up. We use uh, smaller pieces of wood when we do the firing. It acts as a timer. I use every 45 minutes to, to fire my pit and it keeps a 300 degree temperature. So after 45 minutes it's cooled down a little and your fires burn back down to some nice even usable coals. And you shovel the coals from the fire over to the pit in a nice even layer. It's not something that you can rush. The pit has to warm up, the meat has to warm up, the ground has to warm up. For my chicken, I just use salt. It seems to cure the skin while it's cooking and then it'll hold the juice in a little better. But the most of the salt that I'm putting on here will go ahead and sweat off while it cooks so it doesn't taste as salty as it might look. On my pork, these tenderloins, I'm gonna put garlic powder, onion powder, marjoram, sweet basil, salt, and pepper on them. Everything will get barbecue sauce the last 20 minutes that I cook. Forty-five minutes have passed. We're on our second preheat. Pretty soon we'll load the pit full of meat and we can start. Chicken is two and a half hours per side. That seems like a long time but by the time your pit has warmed up, the ground is warmed up and you've taken your time to make everything come to right heat. Two and a half hours it will not be, it'll go by pretty quick. It's, it's, it's faster than it sounds, but chicken takes about five hours. If you use a Boston butt, which is a thicker cut of meat, uh, you know, a seven pound Boston butt, you want to, it's 10 hours to cook that type of meat. And then you're in for the long haul. And if you go for a, a full shoulder, it's close to 20 hours and you are going to be there a long time but it's the proof is in what you get for a, a great tasting barbecue you at least need to leave a quarter of an inch for air gaps in between your meat to let, allow the heat to transfer evenly don't crowd your pit there's a fat side on the boston butt that'll be the side that goes down last that will cup that grease and and hold it and keep the moisture in Chicken the same way, you do the bone side down, you're in for a five hour cook, uh, two and a half hours, you want to flip it. Don't worry about how it looks, it's halfway, it's just halfway. And a lot of people make a mistake of taking the sauce and well, we're going to make good barbecue and we're going to sauce it six times during the cook. It's uh, the good way to burn your meat 
and the sugars and the ketchup that are inside the barbecue sauce burns on first. And once you've burned it to the meat, well that's what you're going to taste, a burnt ketchup sauce. The last 30 minutes of cooking your meat is the best time to put your sauce on. And if you put it on any earlier, you're just going to have a burnt mess. A lot of cooks do that. A lot of people think that that's good barbecue. Just not something that I've been raised to do. My grandfather taught me how to do the sauce. I, it was a recipe that was handed to him through an odd fellows meeting. And it took him years to get it from the head barbecue master. It took me eight years of begging to get this sauce recipe that I use, and I've tweaked it a little bit to make it more user-friendly to everybody. And I've made it now for 25 years, and it's patented and trademarked. It's my sauce. It's a vinegar-based sauce. You have vinegar, ketchup, mustard, brown sugar, white sugar, garlic powder, onion powder, little Worcestershire sauce, chili powder, and black pepper. And that's it. It's just the, the magic quantity of, of how much you put in it. You can take any kind of barbecued meat chopped up by the same person and cook it under charcoal condition or a stainless steel pit condition or the open pit way that I do it and just like a coca-cola test you can tell the difference and you can taste the charcoal type of meat or a stainless steel pit or just the all natural wood coals I think it's just the best way to cook it and you go to Memphis and the old timers they'll agree with it 100% that there's just no other way to do it but shovel your coals and use no man-made or stainless steel pits they just don't taste the same as a natural brick or steel container and that's what's made history of barbecue what it is yummy 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 I got meat in my tummy it's always a good party plenty of good barbecue and beer Slept here several nights. Lots to eat and lots of fun and meet a whole lot of new interesting people. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Some of the best eating you'll ever have. Anytime Tim's a cooking, I'm a eating. I'm Tim's girlfriend. I've been his girlfriend for seven years now. He is the best cook in the world. Of course, I don't cook at all, so that helps. <laughs> the end result, friends and family, good smoking, good pit. You've got your food ready to serve. Everyone's having a good time. This is why I like to barbecue, and I hope that that's why you would want to barbecue also. Thank you for showing up, and good luck. This is slow smoking at its best, folks. This is what it's all about.